Welcome to the Dementia and Housing webinar on Equipment and AIDS. Hello, this is a webinar around AIDS and adaptations navigating the maze for dementia. My name is Jan Collett and I'm an occupational therapist and my colleague Vicky Harris-Merrick is a rehabilitation officer for the visually impaired. Next slide please. If you have difficulty getting in and out of your home or you have difficulty accessing rooms within your home, we can refer you to the Minor Adaptation Service um, at Care and Repair Newcastle. Um, you can be referred by a professional or you can refer yourself. They will then send out a trusted assessor who will assess your needs and provide you with simple pieces of equipment such as shower boards, toilet frames, grab rails or banister rails and will do any minor adaptation costing up to a thousand pounds. There is a dedicated phone line and an email address if you happen to have the internet. Hopefully a repair and handy person service will be available soon and they will be available at a slight cost to you but they can do things like putting up pictures or shelves. Next slide please. So if you have complex needs and dementia comes under this heading, you would need an occupational therapy assessment. Now the way to get to um, our team is via the Community Health and Social Care Direct team who are based at Westgate. They also provide information, advice and support for adults and their carers. They can refer you on for um, a social work assessment of your needs or they can refer to occupational therapy um, and the sensory service that Vicky belongs to. Um, and they also take safeguarding and arrange emergency support. Next slide, please. So the role of the occupational therapist is that we come out and assess your functional activities and needs around your home environment. So we would look at how you're managing to get on and off your toilet, getting up and down your stairs, on and off seats, um, how you're managing cooking. Um, following an assessment, we recommend the most suitable solution for the functional issue that you have difficulty with. So we might look at seating, bathroom adaptations, we might look at a stair lift, extension etc. We also assist you with rehousing either via YHN uh, directly or um, via Care and Repair Newcastle. So we support independence at home so we're trying to keep people in their homes to maximise their independence um, and prevent them going into hospital or residential care. Um, we can also refer and signpost you to other agencies, including sensory support. Next slide, please. So the role of the rehabilitation worker is um, that somebody like Vicky will cover orientation and mobility, um, independent living skills like making a cup of tea, cooking, um, she would look at your low vision and provide some therapy for that. Um, see the best way for communication um, and rehabilitation workers would cover complex needs, sensory impairment and um, simple, simple needs as well. Next slide, please. I'm going to hand you over to Vicky at this point. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, and as Professor Tom Kitwood uh, said, when you've met one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia. So the, each, each person's an individual and their journey and their dementia is uh, what it is to them. So we would provide a tailored assessment um, to meet that person's need wherever they are on that journey. Next slide, please. So the sort of symptoms you're expecting is uh, memory loss, difficulty in concentration, organising and planning, problems with communicating, um, 
sight and visual difficulties. So um, you would get uh, visual disturbances perhaps, or just dealing with sight loss on top of the dementia. So orientation difficulties, uh, mood and behavior changes as well. So dementia and sight loss. So you could have dementia and you could have an underlying eye condition as well, or you could have you could be struggling with uh, the visual effects of the dementia, or you could be struggling with all all of those things. So things like cataracts, um, vision and visual effects following stroke, and just the normal aging of the eye. Next slide, please. So difficulties, increased difficulty understanding and learning new tasks. So this is the barriers that we would face as well in trying to deliver packages that we degrade. Um, increased disorientation, communication pro uh, difficulties and, and um, more visual mistakes. So uh, mistaking, for instance, um, a puddle for a cat. That's just one of them using as an example uh, and overstepping those things and there's possibly not even anything there so the, that increases the risk of falls as well next slide thank you so with it with with, with any loss there comes all sorts of um feelings of of despair and that could be loss of activities loss uh, social isolation um, loss of self-esteem, increased anxiety because of this, um, loss of independence and the loss of traditional coping strategies. Next slide. So just to use someone as an example, um, we've called him Mr B. He lives alone. He's 76, lives in a bungalow. Um, his wife died previously, three years uh, to, previous to that. Well supported by family, though main carer is his daughter um who is a nurse so that was useful as well she, he has macular degeneration which affects his central vision so anything he looks straight ahead at he can't um decipher and it isn't clear and um, but his peripheral vision is still quite good and he's also got dementia so this, the sort of things he's having difficulty with is accessing correspondence he was unable to pour hot liquid because looking straight at something you don't know whether you're overfilling or underfilling um unable to orientate um just episodes throughout the day um wandering into a room and um not understanding why he was there or or able to orientate back out of the room successfully uh he was unable to identify time looking again straight at a clock face you couldn't you couldn't see the time uh, unable to keep track of appointments and visitors and unable to manage his nutrition really successfully um bathing became difficult and he was at risk of tri trips and falls next slide please so the sort of things we did and how we supported so we worked in partnership with uh, newcastle vision support as well as his family to get the best success um those needs were met with um visual prompts and signage around the home we kept it on yellow paper uh, as good contrast we kept it big bold and bright we kept it simple as well his daughter had quite a lot of um post-it notes around the the house um which made it difficult for him to pick out the bits of information that he really needed um because it was all just a bit too much information bum ponds to uh, to isolate things so especially like i think things on the microwave so um the only way you get good use of a bump on which is um for those are just sticky dots in case nobody knows what the bump ponds are and basically the bump ponds um are used to identify like i say things I've got one stuck on my hand there. Now, the the use of a bump on is not to over bump on, basically. You just want to isolate certain dials. Um, we introduced a, a one cup machine, a cup that you put underneath um, a machine that boils and measures one cup from just the press of one button. It was still a new piece of equipment that we were introducing to him with repetitive support. 
on how to use that. He was able to use that and it was safe. Um, we had marked up the tea coffee sugar caddies easily. Um, we um, helped him identify things that he needed to pick up. Time pieces were really good because we got uh, things like um, a calendar clock um, that demonstrated the, the time and the date. So uh, from the press of a button and it was it meant it was really important because he was ringing his daughter up in the middle of the night and wanting you know wanting information um but however when he woke if he walked through the night there was a sign to say that this other clock this is where the clock was and to press it to find out the date and the time it did help massively um we did large print calendars we did a communication book so any anyone that that went in would then um be able to write in the book Again, on, on, it was a large print one, uh, which meant that he, we could write sort of in big, bold, black pen, um, just things that he, who visited that day, what they did, and what was the conversation about, that sort of thing. Anti-glare shields made it really, um, you know, we, again, we worked in partnership with the, um, Newcastle Vision Support, because then they could support with um, pieces of equipment that we, the, we didn't supply um but that we all came together uh to offer them a holistic much more holistic su um support things like as well decluttering was really important because visual clutter is um it, it's it's a problem when it comes to obviously trying to decipher information around your home um and make things easier make make tasks more manageable um lighting upgrading the lighting was really important as well so that you know in, encompassed it's a better um working environment in the kitchen and where he was to do safety obviously around the door around stairs uh, or steps um for you know just back step that sort of thing anyone was at, that was at the door uh, so you could see better see who who was there and um alleviating um the risk of of trips and falls um, when you're upgrading the lighting throughout the home. Um, we ref we then re went on to refer to the OT team for bathing assessment. And um, like I say, we worked really closely with uh, lots of other agencies to help bring together a much more holistic approach. Um, and working partnership was very beneficial. Next slide. So the th simple things that we, we, c we can recommend is you know, making sure, like I said before, about lighting, contrast and making it clutter free, making it familiar. So even when it comes to, um, you know, wearing your, your same old glasses and if, if you need an upgrade to the lens, get it, have an upgrade to the lens following on, on your assessment from the optician. But make it in the old frames so that they're still familiar and they still know what they're looking for, um, if that's if that's feasible. Also a lot cheaper as well. Um, there's a link there that you might, you know, like to go on just to make sure that, um, you know, you, that, that, that I mean, it's all current and up to date. But the clean, current, and correct um, is definitely approach to to make sure that we're adopting with the glasses. Um, just just the simple thing like making sure they're clean. Next slide, please. You'll see. Um, what I mean by in this slide with uh, visual disturbances that the, the person might be able to get. So if if you had cataracts on top of the, the dementia in this instance, that would just be one big white splodge in the middle of a shiny, what looked like a lake to someone. Um, there's another slide with with uh, an, another example there of a, of, a, of a rug in the middle of a room. This person actually thought this was a pond with lily pads on it. So how the information around someone, if it's too patterned, too cluttered, uh, not good contrast and too shiny to produce glare, that all of these things can um, make it really difficult for someone to navigate just around a home or their own home. Um, next slide, please. So visual hallucinations, people with sight loss can experience visual hallucinations without having dementia. And I come across a lot of people that um, would 
would would be reluctant to talk about any visual hallucinations that they're having. In actual fact, there is a, a, an eye condition called Ch Charles Bonnet syndrome. And um, this would, you know, this has nothing to do with dementia, although um, you can have Charles Bonnet on top of dementia, which is uh, very unfortunate because it does create um, some very disturbing uh, visual um, effects and is is yeah quite disturbing for that person. But yeah, it's uh, it's something Charles Charles Bonnet syndrome. It's something that um, was rarely talked about but has been uh, around for a little while, but has now just come into the forefront a bit more um, around just just making making people more aware of it, that um, it's it's actually not dementia. Um, that, but people with dementia can, may experience hallucinations as well. Sight loss as well can increase the risk of a person's um, hallucinations with dementia. Um, so it can be very difficult. So lived experience, so this um, person's daughter had given us a little snippet and that it was very hard for a dad to do things and not just the effects of macular disease but the poor and the poor central vision but the confusion and the memory loss because of the dementia makes everything twice as difficult for him. And you can see him just giving up. Next slide please. So, I don't know, Jan's to summarise. So, to, to, to summarise, if you've got simple equipment or adaptation needs, then you need to contact um, Mars on the number that's on the screen. Now, if you have complex needs, so that's... Um, anything including dementia and other neurological conditions or you have vision and need rehabilitation um, work done then you need to contact social care direct on the number that's on the screen thank you kate i'm not sure if i need to do yep. that last one Again. No, it's fine. It's fine. Right. So, okay. um, so now I'm going to go through the questions with you. OK, so I, ho I hope everyone found that as informative as I did. Um, thank you, Vicky, and thank you, Jan, for that presentation. I think um, I'm looking in the chat box now and we've got a few questions coming in. Um, the first one, I think, is for you, Vicky. It's how does somebody with Charles Bonnet distinguish it from dementia? So, um, I mean, obviously there's a medical difference in there as well, but um, if somebody was uh, worried that the hallucinations that they were seeing, um, which can be quite uh, colourful, I think that's one distinction, um, and... Uh, they've possibly been diagnosed with a, with an eye condition on top of that so it's where well, it's it's the distinct just vision difficulties that that cause there is no memory difficulties uh, alongside that there's no other um disorientation or other than the than the vision loss itself if they have um so a distinct medical dif difference and also the the other things that that come with dementia, uh, that that shouldn't be present as well. Thank you. Does that help? <laughs> yes, no, it does. Thank you very much. Jan, uh, uh, here's a question for you. If you're an owner occupier and you're not sure about how to adapt it or whether it can be adapted, uh, how can you help? Um, so if you um, are an owner occupier and you are not sure if your house can be adapted or not, then you would have to come through to um, our service. So you would go via Social Care Direct, um, Occupational Therapist um, or a Disability Assessment Officer would come out and have um, 
have a look at your home, have a look at how you're functioning in your home, and then they would be able to decide what would be the most um, suitable solution for your issue. So if you're breathless and perhaps you've got a heart condition, then you're struggling up the stairs, so then they would think about a stair lift as being a suitable way of getting you up and down the stairs. Thank you. Um, you said you did refer to other agencies. If you were a private owner occupier, could you still get access to social housing? So if you um, felt that your house was um, unmanageable or we came out and we couldn't give you the correct solution for your difficulties, then we would refer you to Care and Repair Newcastle, who would then um, look at your rehousing request and they normally um, send you to YHN in order to see if they have a housing solution for you. Thank you. And then in the chat box, someone's asking, what happens when SCD takes that phone call? How does it get to you? So when Social Care Direct um, talk to somebody, we've given them like a checklist that they have to go through with somebody. So um, there's some identifying um, bits and bobs within that that tell us um, exactly why the issues are. So if you can't get in and out of the bath, then they will ask you a few more questions about why you can't get in and out of the bath. If you can't get up and down the stairs, they would ask you to clarify your issues about getting up and down the stairs. So um, they normally take a medical history as well, which then helps identify um, a little bit about you before we get, get to you. Um, and they send a referral via an electronic system and then that's picked up and screened. Thank you. So who, if you phone the Mars service, who is at the end of that phone call? So the Mars um, service employs an occupational therapist to take the phone calls or look at the emails that come in. She will then screen those um, telephone calls or the emails. She might phone you or talk to you and do an, a telephone assessment. And in some cases, she actually will visit your home. Thank you. I think the last question is, what kind of impact has COVID had on your timescales for the main OT services and sensory support? So, um, like everybody else in the country, um, we were affected by lockdown and a lot of the services that um, would be provided during that time um, were very limited. So, it has had an impact on our waiting list, but we do endeavour to keep in contact with people by sending them um, written correspondence which asks them to detail any of their additional needs to the original request. Um, would that perhaps change where somebody was on the waiting list? Um, if if you have additional needs to the original referral that you came in with, then we would look at your um, overall need and you could well um, find that you would be seen sooner. Thank you to Jan and Vicky for those interesting insights into their services on behalf of Newcastle City Council. Look out for the rest of our webinar series including extra care housing, how to stay put at home and carers. Thank you for listening. See you next time.